Well, howdy y'all, and welcome to Old Hillbilly Horror Podcast. The crisp morning air embraced me as I tightened the straps on my backpack, preparing for our daring patrol into the uncharted territory of Yellowstone National Park. I was part of a team of park rangers who was tasked with exploring the untouched depths of the wilderness, mapping new trails, and ensuring the safety of both visitors and wildlife. With a mixture of excitement and caution, we set off into the dense forest, the towering trees forming a majestic canopy above us. Each step echoed through the serene silence, our boots crushing twigs and leaves beneath them. The beauty of nature surrounded us, but so did the untamed mysteries that lay hidden within. As we ventured deeper into the wilderness, our senses sharpened, our eyes scanning the surroundings for any signs of disturbance. Suddenly, a faint cry broke through the stillness of the forest. We exchanged glances, our instincts alerting us to something amiss. Following the anguished sound, we stumbled upon an injured camper, his face etched with pain and fear. Blood stained his clothes, and his trembling hands clutched a makeshift bandage over a deep gash on his arm. We rushed to his side, offering assistance and asking what had befallen him. His voice quivered as he recounted his terrifying encounter. He described a creature, massive and hairy, with eyes that seemed to penetrate his very soul. It resembled the Bigfoot, a creature often dismissed as folklore. Skepticism flickered in our eyes, but empathy compelled us to listen further. The injured camper revealed how the creature attacked him without warning, its strength overwhelming. He fought back with all his might, desperately struggling to free himself from its grip. In a stroke of desperation, he managed to strike a blow that sent the beast sprawling. Believing it to be dead, he escaped but the trauma had clouded his memory of the exact location. Our gazes shifted between disbelief and concern. Could it be possible? Were we standing face to face with evidence of a creature? We assessed the situation, weighing our duty to the injured camper against the unknown dangers that lurked in the depths of the park. Realizing that his life hung in the balance, we made a collective decision to prioritize his well-being. Carefully, we helped him to his feet supporting his wounded arm. Navigating through the wilderness, our group communicated with the local hospital, arranging for an immediate transfer of the injured camper. The journey was arduous. We formed a protective shield around him, ensuring his safety as we traversed the untamed terrain. Finally reaching the edge of the wilderness, we handed him over to the waiting medical professionals. Exhausted, yet satisfied that we had fulfilled our duty, we watched as he was whisked away to receive the urgent care he needed. Though skeptical of his encounter, we couldn't shake off the nagging curiosity that lingered within us. In 1999, I was working at a state park in Pennsylvania and got to know the back areas of it pretty well. The areas most tourists do not get to see. Approximately one mile from the park on a long all-dirt road was a large clearing in the woods which was cleared for power lines and gas well use. Once you got to that spot, you would have to walk over a long hill until you came to an old abandoned trail. If you followed this trail, it would take you deep into the forest. Once day I followed it and found that it led to an old dilapidated cabin, not on the park cabin records, and it looked like it hadn't been used for many decades. Even though it was daylight, I still got this creepy feeling like I shouldn't be there and worse. That something was watching every move I made. A few weeks later, while I was off duty, two of my friends and myself were just out driving around enjoying the summer night, and since I knew all the back roads I was taking them on kind of a tour note. None of these roads are off limits or secrets so I wasn't breaking any rules. Other than that mysterious cabin the park hasn't any secrets. About 11 p.m. I came to that familiar clearing, and I mentioned something about the old cabin. Being a brave soul, I talked them into letting me show them the cabin, so I grabbed my flashlight and we took off down the hill and onto the path that led to the cabin. I took the lead and we walked halfway when all of a sudden my light flashed on something on the right side of the path. Almost immediately I stopped and said, 
Did you just see that? To which they responded, see what? As I panned the light back to the right side of the road, I said, that. There standing by a tree was a creature only seen in sci-fi movies. It had a grayish olive color skin and very thin in its extremities. The calves and forearm muscles were very large as well was the chest. The face was the strangest thing since it had the typical alien gray head shape, but there was no mouth. It had a nose that was long and thin, but not longer than its chin. The eyes had a reddish gleam in the light, but not the size of most reported aliens. Very small even by human standard. I hate to make this reference for fear of questioning my sanity, but my best description was like what the goons looked like in the Popeye cartoon. It leaning oddly against the tree, like if you were leaning on an armchair by only one arm. To make another TV show reference, but like the fonts would lean on the jukebox on happy days. Minus the legs being crossed. Immediately everyone wanted to leave, but as we turned my flashlight went out. My friends told me to quit messing with them and turn the light back on to which I informed them that I wasn't messing with them and to keep moving now that I was at the back of the group. I frantically continued to beat on my flashlight trying to get it to work again. As soon as it came back on, I immediately swiveled back around to shine it behind us. The creature had moved up significantly and now was on the left side. We hurried to the clearing and once we got back up the hill, and to the main dirt road things got worse. Out of woods we had just come through was this high-pitched blood-curdling screeching noise which, after it started, others started to answer back from the other side of the clearing. The fact that I was a park ranger, had been in the woods all my life and had my degree from Penn State in wildlife management means I've heard a lot of noises in the wild, but have never heard that sound before. I know it wasn't any kind of owl or bobcat, bear, bird, porcupine. You get the drift. Once I told my dad about the encounter, he told me it could have been the chupacabras which I had never heard of before, and as far as aliens go, never believed in it until recently. Months went by without incident, other than not being able to shake that I'm watching you feeling. I was to the point of feeling like I was being stalked. One night I went to get something from my truck when I looked into the woods and saw those reddish glowing eyes staring at me in the shadows. I immediately ran into the house and grabbed my biggest knife I am not a gun guy to which my dad asked me what I was doing. I told him I was tired of feeling stalked and was going to face this thing. He told me he was coming with me but all along I knew he never truly believed me or my encounter. When we got outside he nonchalantly asked, Okay, where did you see this thing? And I pointed to the spot to which he directed his flashlight. Much to his disbelief there it was, and as soon as the light hit it tore off deep into the woods. My dad, an ex-marine who served proudly during Vietnam, yelled at me to get back into the house with fear. Fear in his voice. To this day it still creeps me out telling this encounter and my hands shake, even while typing while recalling it all. I am now in my thirties with a wife and kids, but even now when I go outside at night, I still feel watched to the point that when I get a real strong feeling my wife won't let me leave the house without her. Just as a side note, for the first five years of our relationship she too would catch sight of this creature, but mostly as it was going into the shadows. As a further note if anyone is questioning it, there were no drugs or alcohol or any other substance involved during this or any other encounter I have had. Hello, something happened last summer that has left me with many questions and few answers. I was employed at an appliance and furniture rental and sales business in Great Bend, Kansas. One morning a co-worker and I opened the store. When we arrived we noticed that the back door was open, and when we entered the back room all the lights in the store had been turned on. It didn't look like a break-in because the security latch was intact. The security system had been disabled, there was no power indicator on the code box. We immediately called the police and the store manager to report the situation. We were told not to open the store and to remain in the back office until someone arrived. A few minutes later, after hanging up the phone with the store manager, a police officer was knocking on the back door. 
I left him in and told him what we had found when we arrived. The officer started to walk through the back room and into the showroom when we started to hear a baby cry. I thought that a customer may have somehow entered the store and that they had a baby with them. My co-worker and I followed the officer in the direction of the crying well. I didn't believe what I saw. There were two babies lying on a twin-size bed display. The officer told us to stay there while he checked the rest of the store. He had also radioed for another police officer to come to the location. I looked down at the babies who were both tightly wrapped in dark green cloth. Both babies were quiet, very still, and looking at me and my co-worker. I was taken aback by their odd eyes. Both babies had large pupils that were black. There were no irises and neither of the babies blinked. The police officer was soon back with us. He commented on the baby's eyes as well. In fact, he was totally freaked out so much so that he looked scared. The store manager soon arrived as well as a senior police officer. We all stood around the bed looking at these strange babies who lay there quietly watching us. The store manager pulled my co-worker and me to the side and told us to go ahead and leave. He was not opening the store until he found out what was going on. We quickly headed toward the back door and left. I wasn't scheduled to work until a couple days later, but I had talked to a few co-workers who said that the atmosphere in the store was very strange. They had been receiving weird telephone calls and the security system alarm would trip on several times during the day. I got to work a little early for my next scheduled shift. When I arrived, the store manager was sitting in the office, so I asked him what had happened after we had left. He said that two young women, who said they were from the municipal court, eventually showed up and took the babies. The senior police officer told him later that he had no idea who the women were, but that he was told by his superior not to impede. He thought they were probably from McConnell FB in Wichita. He also said that the babies were very quiet and seemed relaxed the entire period that they were there. I stopped working there not long after. Things were just never the same, and it got tougher each day, especially when odd-looking people would come into the store and just walk around. I didn't feel comfortable being there. February or March, I think. 1988 or 1989. Maybe 1990, but I doubt it. There were four adults and three older children in the car. We were waiting for Amtrak to show up. It was close to dusk. Something came across our view way across the tracks, maybe 200 feet away. I could be wrong about the distance. On the far side was the edge of the forest. Walking along the edge of the forest in southerly direction was a big brown hairy creature. At first we thought it was someone in costume, but soon realized it wasn't and that it was a real. There's this stretch of river far north of town that I liked hiking alongside. I'd never seen anyone else out there, and I enjoyed the simplicity and peacefulness of that isolation. One morning I took my dog with me, and we were crossing a shallow stretch of the river while she was tethered to my belt. She's a calm, friendly dog, hardly ever barks, and is always happy to meet strangers and other creatures. But when we reached the middle of the river, she suddenly started barking and jumping around on her tether like something was coming at us. I swiveled around and saw that she was just barking at some middle-aged guy in an oversized red t-shirt standing on the riverbank we'd just left. At first I was relieved that it wasn't a mountain lion or bear, so I waved to him and said hello. But he just kept standing there staring at us without any expression on his face. Meanwhile my dog kept snarling barking and pulling at her leash like she wanted to get free to go kill him. Completely uncharacteristic of her. I tried to get her to calm down, but she was lost in her fury, so I just started slogging my way towards the other riverbank, towing her behind me. I kept glancing back at the guy and saw that he'd started pacing up and down the riverbank, still watching us. I waved to him again and told him to, have a good day, stranger, but again he didn't acknowledge it just kept pacing and then stopping to stand there staring at us. Dog kept going nuts with the barking and snarling until we climbed up the other riverbank 
and put a few layers of trees and rocks and foliage between us and the guy. The rest of the hike, whenever she'd tense up and perk her ears up and look off into the woods, I'd get a bit paranoid and fish the folding knife out of my pocket in case. It was the red shirt guy following us and not just some little critter drawing her attention. Took a roundabout, long way back to my car that crossed the river in a different spot from where we'd seen him. I want to preface before that I've always somewhat believed in these type of creatures aliens, skinwalkers, windigos, spirits, etc. But I've always been the kind of person who doesn't 100% believe or not in something. I've just always believed that it's possible, so why not? But of course, just like anyone else who hasn't experienced something, I had my doubts. Also, I wanted to add that I am not the type to be scared of entities. When it comes to what I believe and how I see spirits, I am never scared of them. I understand them and I have always connected with them. Last night I was with my partner and our friend, and we were at a place called Rafe's Chasms in Gloucester, Massachusetts. We got there at about 9.30 p.m., and we were just going to have a fire on the rocks by the water. You had to walk through some wooded area to get to the rocks, and as we pulled up to the area, I had a bad feeling for some reason. And usually trust my intuition, but I told myself I was just psyching myself out. Once we got to the spot, I immediately felt a weird feeling, but again, I told myself I was just making things up. Even so, I didn't turn my back to the open space, and I was turned facing towards the woods or rock area. As the people I were with watched the fire, I stared out into the darkness, feeling like something was watching us. I decided to go to a rock further away from the fire so my eyes could adjust to the darkness. And lo and behold, I see a translucent white figure about 50 feet away from us on top of the rocks on the other side of the area pretty high up. It was moving back and forth, and it looked about five, six feet tall. It starts to scale down the rocks, and when I say scale, I mean fast like faster than humanly possible. And as it's doing that, it gets smaller and turns into the shape of an animal like a coyote or wolf shapeshifters usually are said take form as one of these. I say, is that an animal? And my partner looks over and immediately gets super sketched out just as I was. The other person we were with wasn't bothered by it for some reason. He said he saw it, but in the moment was trying to convince us it was a person. He was drunk as I see it coming towards us. I get absolutely horrified that it's going to kill us. I tried to go up higher on the rocks to get away from it. I literally thought that was it. I thought I was going to die. I had the most horrifying feeling, and it was genuinely the scariest, most terrifying thing I have ever felt or seen. I pulled out my phone and shined my flashlight on it to make sure I'm not tripping, and I think that it deterred whatever it was away from us because it ended up running into the woods and disappearing. My partner and I were completely horrified and my legs were violently shaking. I said that we need to leave immediately. The friend that we were with wanted to stay to finish his drink, but we wanted to go. He told us that he would prove that it was a human by trying to run down the rocks as fast as he could to prove that a human could go that fast. But when he did, we could hear him running around. And that's the scary part about what we saw. It was completely silent as it went down the rocks and back up them. We weren't able to process what had happened until we had gotten home after we dropped our friend off. When we did, we decided to do some research about skinwalkers and the area where we were. Here's what we found. The first few things that come up when you Google Rafe's Chasm in Gloucester is several articles of deaths that have occurred right where we were. Now, each one states that the deaths were from the waves knocking the people off and drowning them. But this wasn't what freaked us out. I continued to scroll and I came across this weird website. It was a website for stock photos, but for some reason the description included the name of the location we were. When I clicked the website, I literally could not believe what I saw. Proof is attached the image of whatever creature that has looked a lot like what we had seen earlier that night. We still have no idea what to make of this situation, but all I know is I am still scared. Also, needed to add that earlier in the night I heard an owl, and I made sure I said something about it to my friend and partner because I love owls. 
I just heard one woo. I later in the night read that an owl is the eyes for the walkers, which is very interesting. Has anyone else experienced something like this? I was walking down a little dirt road at daylight. I was elk scouting when I come out into the edge of the clear cut at the bottom of the hill. I just started out where I could see the top, which the road I was on led up when I seen some movement. I watched for a second and could not believe my eyes. At first it almost looked like two bears standing up on their hind legs facing each other. They were at about 300 yards. I put my binoculars on them and I witnessed what seemed to be two young Bigfoot playing. I watched them jump around chasing each other and jump up and hit their hands together for about a minute. Then all of a sudden they both just stopped and walked off together into the thick trees. They were about five and a half feet tall with hands down to almost their knees with long brown hair. They looked just like pictures I seen in Walla Walla Washington sightings like two years later. I was leading my team of Navy SEALs on a top secret mission deep in enemy territory in Iraq. The assignment was clear. Infiltrate a hostile country, gather crucial intelligence, and extract a high-value target, a U.S. diplomat threatened by Saddam Hussein's henchmen. As we moved through the treacherous terrain, I couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and tension. The adrenaline surged through my veins as we approached our objective. Our team was composed of skilled and dedicated individuals, each with their own unique traits. Among us was Bruce, an exceptional soldier who had a hidden talent. When he wasn't fighting on the battlefield, Bruce would occasionally entertain us with his rock guitar skills during our downtime. It was his way of bringing a touch of normalcy to our demanding lives. As we executed the mission, we encountered relentless opposition from a well-trained enemy force. They were determined to protect their leader and maintain control over the region. It seemed like every step we took was met with gunfire and strategic ambushes but we were Navy SEALs trained to overcome any obstacle thrown our way. However, our journey took an unexpected turn when we discovered that the supposed weapon of mass destruction we were tasked to locate didn't exist. It was a false lead, a deception that had led us into this dangerous territory. Doubt began to creep into our minds as we questioned the validity of our mission. Were we being used as pawns in a larger political game? Anyway, that's not why I'm telling you this story, so listen up. During one intense raid on a local house, as we stormed through rooms and cleared them one by one, I found myself face to face with something that defied explanation. In a locked room, I caught a glimpse of a bizarre creature. The only way I can describe the legs of it is like that goat or human hybrid from the Narnia movie, but with the torso like a hybrid of man and canine. It was taller than me, and I'm tall. Its outline and coat were pitch black, blacker than anything I've seen before. Its eyes, piercing and filled with an unknown intelligence, seemed to lock onto mine for a split second before chaos erupted. The creature swiftly tackled me, and with incredible strength, managed to break free from my grasp. It vanished into the chaos of the firefight, as I struggled to regain my composure. Confusion and shock overwhelmed me as I tried to comprehend what I had just witnessed. But in the midst of the ongoing battle, I made a difficult decision. Pursuing the creature was not a priority. Our main focus had to be on completing our mission and ensuring the safety of our team. Eventually, we managed to escape the compound with our target in tow, making our way to the outskirts where we were picked up by an army helicopter. As we soared through the skies, I couldn't shake off the image of that strange creature from my mind. When I questioned the other members of the team about it, they seemed puzzled. None of them had seen any such creature during the operation. It left me wondering if what I had witnessed was real or merely a figment of my imagination in the heat of battle. I have been working as a law enforcement officer in Hancock County, Mississippi, where we have been receiving reports about a large bipedal creature near the Stennies Space Center. I had the unsettling experience of encountering this unknown animal, believed to be Bigfoot, 
and I want to share my account. In my submitted report, I described the creature as a huge being, running on two legs at a speed that surpassed anything I had ever seen. At that moment, my main concern was getting away from there without drawing my gun. It happened after I finished my night shift, around 11.30 p.m. My girlfriend picked me up, and we headed home together. Once she dropped me off, I started driving north on Highway 607 towards Bay St. Louis. As I glanced in my rearview mirror, I noticed headlights of another vehicle behind me. I decided to slow down, hoping the driver would pass me. To my surprise, the vehicle continued to tailgate me with its high beams on. Annoyed, I gestured for them to turn off their high beams, but they didn't respond. To get a better look or note their license plate number, I gradually slowed down and moved to the side to let them pass. However, as I did so, the vehicle pulled up beside my driver's side door. I pulled my car over to the shoulder of Highway 607, thinking I was about to confront an unpleasant individual. But what I saw standing on the roadside was not a man, but an incredibly hideous creature of Bigfoot. It walked around my patrol car while I prepared to defend myself, unholstering my firearm. Strangely, the creature showed no signs of fear or aggression towards me. It calmly entered the nearby wooded area, disappearing from my sight. While I am convinced that the encounter was with a Bigfoot, I also want to mention another incident. Inside the buffer zone of the Steny Space Center, around 3.34 am, my patrol car mysteriously died. It was a peculiar occurrence that I will include in a subsequent report along with this new information. I had a normal upbringing. Parents are still married, went to church on Sundays, had a dog, picket fence, all those things. I did a little marijuana in high school, I rarely drink, and there is only one reported case of a mental illness in my family. When I was 12, 13 years old, I remember having a very vivid dream where I was sitting in my living room watching TV. While watching TV, which in my dream I was viewing myself in third person, something made me want to look out through the dining room and out through the large sliding glass door into the backyard. When I turned my head, it was completely dark outside, and then in almost a comedic way of film. This giant moon slid up from below the horizon like from the 9 to 12 position on a clock. The moon was enormous, almost filling the sky and was brilliantly white. As I sit dumbfounded in my dream staring out the back window, something pulls my legs out from under me, while I'm sitting on them on the floor. This startled me, but while in my dream I am still staring at the moon, this voice from what I can only assume was in my head said, It's almost over. This frightened me horribly, so much that I woke up hot and sweaty only to find my bedroom door partially open with a small, dark figure closing the door and saying without moving his mouth, Don't tell. I don't recall really any of the small humanoid's features. I just recall him being about two feet tall and seeing the figure's darker than gray complexion, and nothing moved on its face when I heard it speak. Even to this day this incident is one of the most vivid memories that I have. Seeing your photo of a reptile man was nearly like pulling out a photo of my head from that past memory. I mentioned nothing of this occurrence until just a few years ago to a close friend. I never even told my wife. Well, I went off to college, came back home, got married, had a couple of kids, and just over a year ago bought my parents' house. On and off since the encounter, dream, or incident, whatever you would like to call it, because I don't. I get this feeling like I'm being observed. Not the kind of being watched where you are sitting up at night, unable to sleep. And you feel like someone is watching you through the window. More like something is waiting for me as I walk into rooms and sitting in the car with me while I drive to work. This was only in small increments and I never felt it to be constant. But since moving back home, I am feeling it more so. My son is the fun age of five and recently started talking about some guy he met here at home named Kyle Foker. He tells my wife and I that he has seen him all over the house. Yes, he is a child with an imagination. But while giving him the 20 questions over his new friend, I am rattling my brain on what TV show, 
commercial or movie, he could have come up with this, and so far have come up with nothing. While that is going on, I was in the kitchen just a week or so ago talking to my mom, and for some reason I felt compelled to look the other way and I saw a dark figure. This figure that I saw had an upside-down triangle for a torso and a rectangular block for a head. When I turned to look, I could tell that it looked at me because while my brain was trying to comprehend what I just had seen, I could see that the blockhead sort of rotated and proceeded to take an immediate left and zip its way through my stairs that go up to our bedrooms. From everything that I know, no one has died on this property. My grandfather that lived with my parents and I at my current location for a few years, while from the time I was six, until I was in high school, became ill with Alzheimer's and later passed away having a complication from a stroke at a hospice center. But I am afraid partially for my sanity, but more for my family. Although no one has been hurt in any way, I can't help to think like a father or husband and want to protect my family from any possible threat. But my issue here is that what the hell am I dealing with? Possible alien thing, spirit, mental illness, or all of the above? Am I seeing one thing and my son is seeing something else? It was dead in the middle of winter, and he was working on a camp on a remotish island in the boundary waters far north of Minnesota. On this island is a bunch of different cabins, some for sleeping, some for storing things, and one which housed the dining area for the camp. On the one phone on the whole island, my dad received a call from the sheriff from the nearest town. Granted, this town is miles away and across a frozen lake and through miles of forest. The sheriff told him that there was a call for 911 coming from the phone that my dad was talking to him on. He talked to the two other people that were also working up there at the time, both of which were on the opposite side of the island. After checking around to see if there was anyone else there, he went to loom through the other cabins and found nobody. He always tells me that was the only night he slept with a loaded shotgun next to him. I hunt, but I have two stories from the same spot, and I wasn't hunting during either of them. My family was camping in a canyon in southeast Idaho. This location is accessed from northeast Utah. I was about seven at this time, so that would have been around 1981-ish. We were on a family camping trip, and it was about nine at night, and we were all hanging out around the fire. I remember this part because it was so weird. All of a sudden, my dad looks at my mom and in a hushed voice says, get the kids in the car now. My mom was caught off guard and said, what do you mean? And he said back, Get the kids in the car now as fast as you can. Well, my mom was mad, but started telling us to all get in the car, so we all did. After we were all in the car, my dad hoped in the driver's seat, and we backed out of the campground and drove one hour and ten minutes home. Leaving everything we brought at the campsite, including the fire burning, I know this is bad, but this was the ADS, and I'm sure none of us had our seat belts on either. The next morning, my dad and uncle went back up and loaded all of our stuff up and brought it home. Okay, so no flash forward to about 2003, and I'm talking to my older brother about this camping trip. And I asked him why did we leave that night? Well, come to find out we were being watched by. Well, something. So as my dad was sitting there, and he was looking at a line of bushes about 20 yards away, he watched a head walking back and forth behind these bushes. Here is the kicker. The bushes were about six to seven feet tall. I guess my dad watched the thing for about 30 to 60 seconds before it turned its head and looked at us, and he could see the two eyes reflecting back at him because of the firelight. It scared him so bad he made us all go home that second. My brother said he never did say what he thought it was. He just knew it was large and tall. Two, same spot as camping trip from one. It's about 1995 and me, my friend and younger brother are camping in this same spot because we were going to go fishing the next day. Remember I did not know about why we left this spot until years after this. It was about 2 a.m. and we were all sleeping when down from the canyon to the east of us came the low scream. It wasn't like a woman's scream, it was low like a man yelling, but that's not even a good description. 
And the reason I know it came from the east was we woke up to it, and as I was saying what was that, it screamed again. We did not sleep much that night, and we all put our handguns in our sleeping bags with us. Edit. Also, that gut feeling people described above is something I have had many times there. I don't think I have been back there since I found out why my dad left. Not from being scared, but more of I don't live by there anymore.